share your work, no matter what you think of it. Even if you think that your work is bad, just know that there are people out there that wish they could do what you do. Even if it's bad, there's people that wish that they had the discipline and the will to actually sit down and paint. Like you actually sat down with oil paints, not watercolors, not acrylics. You actually sat down with oil paints, like probably the most intimidating painting medium that there is. You actually did it. You sat down and you took a stab at it and that's awesome. Welcome to Paint Talk, the weekly show where I answer your questions on oil painting. So if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and I just might answer it on next week's Paint Talk. Now, if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Hitting that like button really helps the channel grow. So please do that right now. Now, if you're new to my videos, my name is Chris Fornatero, and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so that you can get better faster. And along with these paint talk Q and A's that I do every Friday, I also have uh, video tutorials on my YouTube page. So if you're looking for demonstrations, you can see those as well. But if you're looking for full in real time painting uh, video demonstrations where you can see every single brush stroke with me talking you through the process, you can find that on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. And if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. Now, if you're watching this video, you are probably trying to learn how to oil paint on your own at home. And I know how difficult that can be. If you have questions, but nobody there to answer them for you. You don't even know how to word the questions to put them into Google or YouTube. I get it, I've been there. I I had to learn most of oil painting on my own. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the best pieces of advice that I learned from painting and learning on my own. All right, my first piece of advice is don't get bogged down in materials. So many beginners get so caught up in what materials they need to have. Like, should I have this? Should I buy this kind of paint? Should I have this, this, and this, this? Don't worry about it. Get what you can afford, get what you like. Keep it simple. You just need the primaries and white to start out. You don't need to be painting on oil primed Belgian linen. So don't get caught up thinking that you're Work's gonna drastically improve if you get better materials, and better materials are the answer to all your painting problems. They're not. Now, do better materials help you make better paintings? Yes, they do. But as a beginner, don't think about that. That's not your concern right now. Your concern is just practicing as much as possible. I always say don't buy any supplies that you don't understand why you're buying it. That can be paint, that can be brushes, that can be linen, canvas, whatever. If you don't know exactly why you're getting it or what the advantage of having it is, that means that you don't need it. In time, as you get better, you'll be seeking to do certain things with your painting and the answer will be changing your materials to get exactly what you want. If you're just starting out, again, don't worry about it. All right, my second piece of advice is have a designated space to paint. Now, I know not everybody can have a painting studio. When I first started out, my painting studio was in my very small bedroom in an apartment that I shared with two roommates. My easel was right next to my bed. I got paint on my bed sheets. It was just... It was cramped, it was not ideal by any means. It probably wasn't all that safe with the fumes and everything. Uh, I've painted on a balcony, a small eight foot by three foot balcony out in the heat. Everybody's setup's gonna be different. And whatever you have to do, just have an area set up so it's easy for you to sit down and paint. This also means keeping your area clean and ready to jump into paint. Don't finish painting a session and not clean your brushes or set your brushes up or you know get your clean your palette, whatever it is. Just make it whenever you finish painting that next time you want to paint, you can just sit down and with as minimal setup as possible, start painting. All right, when you're starting out painting, the key is to paint as much as possible. You wanna get as many reps painting as possible. And if every time you wanna paint, you have to clean your brushes and clean your palette and do this and that, it's gonna make you not wanna paint and you're just not gonna sit down and paint as often. Therefore, you're not gonna get the reps and therefore you're not gonna get better faster. And if you don't get better faster, you're gonna get discouraged and you're gonna quit. And we don't quit here at Paint Coach. All right, my second piece of advice is paint what you want. 
don't paint something because you feel like you have to paint it. Yeah, there are a lot of exercises out there you can do. You know, people suggesting to paint still lifes, like simple fruit still lifes. Yeah, even I have a couple videos on that. Or, you know, just painting the sphere, sitting on a table. If that doesn't excite you, if that doesn't make you want to sit down and paint, don't paint it. Are those things and exercises helpful? Yes, they are. But if you want to go out and paint a portrait, paint a portrait. If you want to paint a landscape, paint a landscape. And in time, as you paint those in the certain areas, Areas that you don't do well in, you're going to see the importance of those exercises like the sphere and the fruit and all of that. And you'll want to go do those exercises because you'll understand the value in doing them and how they will make your portraits and landscapes and everything else better. But if you're starting out painting and it feels like homework, it's not making you excited, you're not going to want to paint as often. Now, as far as practicing goes, don't worry about using copyrighted photos. If it's just for practice to get better and you see an image that you like and it inspires you to paint just paint it it's practice you're not going to be selling this you're not going to be making prints of this whatever you need to do to motivate yourself to practice as much as possible all right now my next piece of advice is copy as much as possible now this doesn't mean copy other people's paintings and try and pawn them off as your own and sell them this means if you find painters that you like do copies of their work for practice i did this a lot when i was younger and like i said earlier the name of the game is practice you no matter what it is practice as much as possible now when you're copying somebody else's work i recommend trying to find one aspect of the work that you like about it whether it's the brushwork the colors the values the composition whatever it is that you like about that find one thing and try and focus on just that one thing while copying if you try and just copy everything you're not going to really learn much from it but copy old masters copy new painters that are painting today that you like it's one thing to see someone's painting and really like the colors really like the brushwork it's another thing to actually have those colors on your palette right in front of you working with them all right my next piece of advice is until you get the hang of painting and kind of know what you're doing a little bit try to stick with one instructor or kind of one way of working once you get a handle on oil paints it's good to you know branch out and experiment uh, with different things. But in the beginning, you want to gain traction as quick as possible. And if you're jumping around from instructor to instructor, method to method, it's going to be hard to improve and take steps forward because you're constantly shifting your method and shifting you know, what you're learning. This happened to me in college and right out of college when I was trying to learn plain air. I would bounce around. I'd see one plain air instructor I liked and I'd follow their videos and their advice, their materials. And I'd see another one. I'd try and follow theirs. And, you know, and in my mind, I kind of thought that there was one way to do it. And I was trying to figure it out through all of them. The one way, there isn't one way. There's many different ways. Everybody has their own way. No one way is better than another. But I do think it's important to stick with one for a certain period of time so you can see improvement. Now, my next piece of advice is use video tutorials properly. Now, I do offer video tutorials on my Patreon page. And I always tell my students, you know, yeah, it's completely fine and very helpful to paint along. It's almost like an advanced way of doing a copy, but also try and learn the concepts that I'm teaching. Try not to get your brain into just copying mode and more into thinking mode and understanding mode and understanding what is happening and how the instructor is doing what they're doing. That way that you can take that and use it on your own work later. Also, video tutorials can be revisited again and again. I have a painting DVD that I bought seven years ago that I still revisit and still see new things in because as you get better and your skills increase, you're going to see different things in those videos. And a lot of these videos are people painting, you know, for hours and you can't possibly absorb all the information in just one viewing. And a lot of times I would find myself when I was struggling with a certain aspect of my work to go back to a tutorial that I had where a painter handled that aspect that I'm struggling with well and and see how they did that. This is a big reason why I started my Patreon page because I wanted to have a large library of tutorials at an affordable price that people could call back on when they're working on their own work. All right, my next piece of advice is get feedback on your work as much as possible. Now, there are a lot of instructors out there that offer online critiques. You can show them your work and they will give you a handwritten critique. There are some that will do a video critique. There are some like me that will do like a video chat talking about your work. 
but just having a pair of more experienced eyes on your work can really help direct you in which way to go to save you a lot of time in the learning process. And it doesn't matter what level you're at. I do this all the time. I'm lucky that a painter, a landscape painter that I really like lives you know, 30 minutes away from me. And I actually go do in-person workshops with him. All right, my next piece of advice is kind of connected to what I was just talking about, which is share your work as much as possible. When you share your work, you know, whether it's in person or online, you're going to attract like-minded people and you're going to attract people that are trying to do the same thing you're doing. And when you get a group of like-minded people together, that's when you start bouncing ideas off each other. You start solving each other's problems, giving each other advice. And when that happens, everybody improves quicker. A couple months ago, I created a private Facebook page just for my Patreon students, and it's been incredible. You know, so many people post in there, so many people are commenting, giving advice. I'll comment on there, I'll give advice. You know, someone will post a painting saying, I don't know what's working on this. Like, can anybody help me? I don't know, something's wrong, this doesn't look right. And people will comment and give great answers and help each other out, especially in today's world where a lot of stuff is shut down. A lot of you don't even have the option to do a painting class in person which if you do do that like if you have a place where you can go and you can afford to go paint in person in a class with people an instructor that is great definitely go do that. But if you can't, you know, having an online community can be very helpful as well. And I know a lot of you that paint might not be the most extroverted people out there and you might be hesitant to share your work. You got to get past that. Share your work no matter what you think of it. Even if you think that your work is bad, just know that there are people out there that wish they could do what you do. Even if it's bad, there's people that wish that they had the discipline and the will to actually sit down and paint. Like you actually sat down with oil paints, not watercolors, not acrylics. You actually sat down with oil paints like probably the most intimidating painting medium that there is you actually did it you sat down and you took a stab at it and that's awesome who knows you can inspire somebody else to paint they say wow this person actually did it they actually sat down they got the oil paints they got the paint thinner the medium and everything and they actually did a painting and they'll think oh maybe I can do that too. And it'll give them the confidence to go out and paint too. All right, my next piece of advice is paint more than one thing. I actually got this question from a student of mine. They're like, well, should I you know, focus just on painting one thing and just get good at painting one thing? I don't think so because you're gonna learn different things from painting different things. And your portraits are gonna influence your landscapes. Your landscapes are gonna influence your portraits and your still lives are gonna influence everything. And if you're starting out painting, if you stick with one thing for too long, you're just gonna kinda of learn how to paint that one thing. You're gonna learn little tricks and kinda of like little shortcuts to you know, make that subject work. And it's very easy to get kinda of like locked in into just being comfortable painting this one thing. You gotta constantly be making yourself uncomfortable. Also, painting different subjects will help keep you from getting bored. That's that's why I do it. I'll paint portraits until I get kind of bored of painting portraits. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go paint landscapes because that excites me now. And then I'll bounce back to portraits. Like, oh, I wanna do a still life. And I'll go do a still life. And, and you know, bouncing around just helps keep me fresh, helps keep me interested and motivated to always be painting. All right, and my last and most important piece of advice is honor the effort. If you've seen a lot of my videos, you've probably heard me talk about this. No matter how your painting goes, no matter how bad it is, no matter how much time you spent on it and it just didn't turn out, you have to honor the effort. You sat down and you painted and just the act of painting means you got better. And just know that you have to go through the bad paintings to get to the good ones. News flash: most of your paintings are not gonna turn out well. At least that's been the case for me. There's time when I didn't spend hours and hours and days, even weeks on a painting, just to realize that it's no good and I don't want anybody to see it. And even though that's tough and it sucks and it's hard to handle, I get over it and past it by realizing that I still got better and I figure out a way how not to do a painting. When that happens, I try to identify what went wrong, what did I do wrong, why does this painting not work, and make sure I don't do that again on the next painting. And also, just so you know, Right when you feel like, oh, I think I'm getting a handle of this painting thing, and I think I got it, I think all my bad paintings are behind me, your next painting will be rough. And you'll be like, wow, uh, I guess I don't know what I'm doing at all. And that's okay, that's completely normal. 
even still to this day, I'll do a painting. I'd be like, wow, I have no idea what I'm doing. That's always going to be there. And that's a good thing because that's going to push you to want to learn more and to get better. Again, if you have questions, leave them in the comments section and I just might answer them on next week's paint talk. Uh, full tutorials are on my Patreon page along with access to the private Facebook group. If you want to see what I am painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. Whoa, you're still here. You made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like it. In that case, you should hit the subscribe button. You'd also probably like this video too. And this video. Please pick one. All right, this is getting awkward.